In the end, the forest claims everyone who enters. Most never return. Those that do come back with their minds and bodies broken. Fight to survive, but know that you will be marked. You will be claimed. You will be the forest's trophy. Welcome to Trophy Dark, my friends. Hello. Oh, I'm so excited to have y'all here tonight. So very excited. So, let us not waste too much time. We're going to play Trophy Dark for about the next three-ish hours. Depends. I mean, you could all die much sooner than that and we'll be done. Um, um, Considering that I'm starting at four, Ruin, I, I expect it to happen very quickly, but I'm pushing my luck. Yes. Let's go. So, let's, so on that note, Erex... Hello. Tell hi, us, Kyle. Hi. Tell us about your character tonight. My name is Lafrange. I was born to a pig farmer, drafted to a pointless war. I lost my eye during it and came back to a home destroyed. I wandered. I've joined with powers quite indescribable. And your character is... What is their background and occupation? I'm a barrister. I have training in contracts. My background is an awakened dreamer. When I met Onos, he awakened me to the nightmares. Awakened to the nightmares. I'm digging on it. Uh, what? Do, just give us a whatever light sketch you want of what Lafrange looks like. You see Lafrange before you. Aha! Perfect. Awakened by Onos, you said. Oh no, the dead eye. Oh, I love it when you go full throttle. Speaking of full throttle, Chase, my buddy, my friend, Chase, oh, hello. Who, who almost lives here. I mean, basically. I mean, basically, you've you were roomies now. Basically, you just it's a nice moved place. In. It's you know, it's you're you're always welcome. So, Chase, tell us about your character tonight. Yes. Uh, my character is, uh, Dumb, which is a nickname. Not sure what their full name is yet. We'll get around to it. They go by Dumb. Uh, he is a footman in a local army militia, perhaps. Uh, formerly a reformed thug, emphasis reformed, uh, whose drive is to buy my brother's freedom. From... He is perhaps a bit less reformed. And on the note of my brother's freedom. So, quick, quick question. Oh, yes. On the note of your brother's freedom. Brother's freedom from what? See, that part is slightly off my screen. Barcel Prison. From Barcel Prison. Is there anybody else here who has a brother in Barcel Prison? Hello, Val. My friend Val, thank you for staying up extra late with us. Val, perhaps uh, you would like to introduce your character. My character's name is Dee. It's also a nickname. She was a sorcerer, also in the army. So she's not in it anymore. That's fine. She doesn't need them. Everything's fine. She wanted to break out on her own and try a couple of new spells, but they didn't like the new spells, so she's trying them out here. She also wants to free her brother from Basel Prison. However means necessary. So, question to our two siblings here. So, actually, before I go further, with names like D and Dumb, and both having a brother in Barcel Prison, is it a f fair conclusion that you two are also siblings? 
Fair. Yes. Okay. But I, <laughs> you know, I just I didn't want to go too far. That's all. Um, okay. Excellent. Um, we're going to be journeying into Rosenwald. In fact, let me tell you, deep within the forest, beyond where the way turns weird, all that is lost may be found within the roses of the Rosenwald. Priceless art, forgotten relics, and even the souls of those separated from this mortal coil. But the roses cling tightly to their prizes, and one must brave the thorns to pry them free. So as we begin on this incursion, this expedition into the portion of the into this haunted forest known as the Rosenwald, first question, whom among you, whoops among you, is leading this little incursion? Because I will have a question for you. Not we did me. not discuss it before, but right. seeing as we were all involved in this petty conflict, perhaps I knew of your brother and may know of their location. And I like to refer to the people at the front as the meat shields. So I <laughs> it's an affectionate term, I swear. <laughs> I think. So does that mean LaFrange is in front? Yes. LaFrange, can you <laughs> roll me one dark die and one light die? My dark die fell on its side. I got a one. Like, they all and fall they... on their side. That's how they do. There's, Talk to my dice straight. Um, there's six of them. Uh, a one yes, on the dark I die. A, I rolled a one on my dark die and a six on the light. You were hired by a masked noble to investigate a rumor. That's how you know where to go. I see. What uh, what rumor did you hear? The rumor. Why, the rumor is that their brother stalks the Rosenwald. He's escaped already. No one is able to speak to him, for each word comes out as gibberish. I love it. I love it. Um, excellent. So, you are, as noted, early in your journey into the Rosenwald. And... As you're progressing through, there's no sudden transition. But at some point, you notice that the undergrowth is, at this point, mostly wild roses. And the way that you're going forward is by the area that doesn't have as many thorny brambles. But you can hear... Some far off, far on the wind. Perhaps not too far. The voice of a woman. Occasionally, raucous laughter punctuates her voice. How do you proceed? I oh. turn to the twins and I ask if they hear the voice as well. Twins, no. No, I hear that. Sounds like she's having a great time. I think she's enjoying the apocalypse. <laughs> Something like that. Well, seems like a good time. Perhaps we should join her. Now, see, I'm not so sure it's that kind of good time. After you, Meat Shield. <laughs> There's much to discuss with... People who laugh, something funny, something to say. Let's proceed. As you proceed, you find yourself, you see ahead of you, I should say, you haven't entered yet, a clearing. And in this clearing, 
there are these different bandits gathered together in what looks like a mock court. Um, presiding over the court, there's this. There's a woman in what was at one time a fine, expensive gown, and now is just a filthy red dress. And she's sitting on this crude, kind of cobbled together wooden throne that is then set on top of an overturned wagon. She's got these other kind of bandit looking fellows surrounding her. And in front of her, kneeling with this with their hands bound behind their back, is a bandit that is half beast and half man. She's reading from a list of crimes on a scrap of paper. And every time she says one, everyone else bursts out into laughter. His nose is too long! And they all start <laughs> laughing. He is too poor to pay the roll. And what's more, he is wearing an ugly shirt. You see, that they're not paying any attention to you. You could sneak around. Or you could go into the clearing. Or do something else entirely. What would you like to do? Look back and forth between my compatriot. Something on your mind, Dom? Um? Again, this doesn't necessarily feel like the kind of a uh, fun time for joining. Certainly not. Or maybe not. I don't understand what she has to say. Wouldn't be the first time. D. He is wearing a very ugly shirt. It's a gorgeous shirt. Don't you talk about yourself that way. Perhaps he deserves to be executed. We should leave them to it. Are the other bandits half man, half beast? Nope, just that one. See. Lefrange will straddle forth and look at the woman in the fine red dress. What's transformed this fine fellow? I say! You do? Are you here to render fealty unto me? And Lefrange extends his arms and does a most gracious bow, of course, my lady. And your entourage. And she gestures. I'll give a kneel. What does D do? D takes off a hat she now apparently wears, because I just made it up. Sure. And does a flourishing bow. And uh, I'm just going to play along for a second, get my bearing. You notice a couple of things as you do. You notice that on the other side of her, there are more criminals tied to trees at the edge of the court. You also notice that this bandit queen wears a simple golden circlet, but in the center of this golden circlet is a single heart-shaped ruby of considerable size. Um, dumb. You recognize one of the criminals, the quote criminals, one of the um, bound people on the other side of the court, as someone important to you. Who is it? Uh, I am going to go with a former running buddy, just a, a street tough, never really did like heists or anything, just kind of like shook people down together. Uh, and... Honestly, he never seemed the type that would amount to anything that would warrant an execution, I'll say. But he was all like, I'm not going to say he was a good person, but he was a nice enough guy. Never did much more than steal purses. So he catches your eye for a moment and he's got this desperate look about him. He's like, Ch -ch -ch. 
you know. Meanwhile, the bandit queen continues on. Very well, the three of you shall pay your toll by amusing me. Amuse me! Lafrange is immediately going to turn to the twins and uh, summon the topsy-turvy spell from his hands. Oh, so you are going to cast topsy-turvy. You're changing the orientation of gravity for something you touch. What, first of all, what is it that you're touching to change the orientation of gravity for? Their hair. For both of them? Yes. What does it look like when you cast this ritual? I suppose it'd be a bit more direct. I reach out and do a little tap on each of their heads. And there's a poof of dust, silver, gold, and other sparkles. And should it succeed, they will rise from their hair. Very good. Now, now is the first time we're going to have a mechanic in the game. When you attempt a risky task, you say what you hope will happen, what you have done, and you ask the GM and the other players what could possibly go wrong. But of course. So, first of all, D and Dumb, what could go wrong as Lafrange attempts to cast this ritual. Lafrange could touch our scalp. Mm. Which is us, not our hair. Right, and you might at that point ha oops, and at that point you might have to uh, grab onto a tree to keep from uh, floating off into the sky. That would be bad. Any other ideas, D? Or does that sound pretty good? I like that one myself, but I like that one. Yeah. Um, okay, so now we're going to gather your dice pool. First of all, is this something that you're skilled at because of your occupation or your background? Those four oh, skills God, no. that you have. Okay. I am, I am not trained in this at all. I just thought it would be amusing. It is very amusing. Um, you must include a dark colored die whenever you perform a ritual, and that's what risks your mind and body. Yes. Would you like a devil's bargain so you can have at least one light die? Otherwise, you're... I will take any offering I can get from the devils above. So, a good devil's bargain here. And what this does is, for those who are new or for those watching, um, a devil's bargain gives you an extra light die, which is better for you, because if your light die is highest, then you don't increase your ruin, which is like negative HP, sort of. Um, but it always involves a complication. You take the complication... You get the extra. You take your chances with the extra die, and that's it. So, let's see. Um, I think that the devil's bargain here is that one of the or here is an a devil's bargain. Um, the other players are free to offer them as well for the extra die. One of the bandits becomes disturbed by your magic and tries to kill you. That's very brutal. Perhaps D or Dumb have another one to offer? If I may introduce my own... Dad, Absolutely. Um, I love it when players do. My hands take on a bestial form. Similar to this poor fellow who stands to be executed. Oh, yes. Perfect. I love it. I'm into it. I, I'll take any other other options. I love <laughs> torture. <laughs> She's not necessarily entertained just with an opening act. She wants it to build to a crescendo in a finale. Okay, so she's going to want more. That's pretty good. She's not satisfied. What else? Only thing in my brain is that something catches fire. <laughs> That's that the most sure. Val thing. That's and a it's, mood. Something catches fire. You cast the spell, and something goes awry, and you set light to her hair. 
I was thinking my own fingernails, but I mean, both is good. So, which of these devil's bargains do you like, if any, Lafrange? Uh, I have to choose one. <laughs> you can, yeah, um, you or you could choose none. You could say, nah, I'm just going to take my one dark die and go with it. No, I'm choosing one. Uh, <laughs> That's good. Let's go with fire. It's on brand. So, you're going to, somehow, a fire will start. Great. Yeah. So now roll one dark and one light, and let's see what you get. My dark die is a six, and my light a four. So you're going to succeed and describe how, but you're going to take a point of ruin, which increases to five now. So we've just started, and already you're one ruin away, although we'll talk about the reduction roll in a minute. So you can describe how you succeed. Well, first of all, describe how you succeed, and feel free to work in whatever gets set on fire. So something will be set on fire. Yeah, either I, I can describe it or you can, either way. Oh, no, I, I just wanted to be, be sure because I am taking yes. ruin. Yes, you are definitely taking ruin. I begin to cast the spell and say some higgledy dook and other magical words and tap the two twins on the head. And it begins to rise up. And once it reaches its point, they begin to flail and sparks ignite from where the sparkles were. And the sparkles come and light Lafrange's bandage on fire, causing the entire thing to singe across, revealing a passing and red eyeball. Oh. My grasp at pain. At this point, Point, I want to tell you out of character that you have now for the remainder of the game for Lafrange specifically unlocked the reduction rule. So when your ruin reach, reaches five you can reduce it by acting in the interests of the forest destroying treasure preventing the use of rituals or sabotaging your fellow treasure hunters and their exit from the forest. But you should do it in a way that doesn't draw attention to yourself. It should look like an accident or simple bad luck. Every time you do you tr you do that, you try to you do that, um, if you then you roll one light die. If it's less than your current ruin, which is five, you succeed at whatever you are trying to do and decrease your ruin by one. And you can keep doing it even when your ruin drops below five. So you've unlocked it for the remainder of the game. So it's a very strange meta game, but I, I, that's the point. That's the the point of it is that while but you could reduce your was ruin, so trustworthy. Yeah, I'm sure that won't cause any troubles. So, um, as you all see his bandage lighting on fire and burning away, revealing that red pussy eye, what do D and Dumb do? Honestly, probably jazz hands. Yeah, I was just <laughs> like, saying, just like jazz leaning hands. into it, maybe like putting a hand in front of the ooey gooey. All the while, I'm, I'm screaming, <laughs> help, help, put it out. Show must go on. What a show. Oh my gosh. So, from there, gauge the queen's reaction. The bandit queen is doubled over in laughter. She thinks this is great. She's more focused on the burning and the pain than she is on the hair floating up, which I have to say, if Dumb's hair is anything like Chase's, is probably fantastic. But. Yeah, I imagine this went from magic show to clownery real quick. And like, you know, it's a different kind of entertainment. Sure. Uh, love you, Lafrange. Very well. You may pass. Um, what do you do? I'm kind of, peeled over in pain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to kind of go over to Dom and just kind of whisper, should we ask her to pay our toll? Oh, she's letting all three of you through. I know, but I'm asking her if she wants to pay our toll. Oh. 
Now this time, I'm not just playing the dumb character, I am the dumb character. What, what is the implication here? <laughs> that she's going to pay us for going through her place. Ooh. Because, Ooh. you know, we've gone through her, her area. We could be well-known people. We've raised the status of this neighborhood and therefore increased house prices. That is fantastic, and <laughs> I would love to announce, now that that order of business is out of the way, perhaps we can move on to the second order of business and our recompense, our toll, as it were. You want me to pay you a toll in my forest. I believe one of you is going to need to make a risk roll here. I am uh, skilled in orders, so I feel like I'm going to refer to her description of this as reductive, but yes, that's what I'm saying. Okay. All right. So you're going to... Dumb is an idiot who knows big words. So you're just giving her an order. Okay. So, what is it you hope she's going to do? Uh, my hope is that we can move past the move straight past the discussion of whether or not this is legitimate and I can like start talking about like what our acceptable payments are kind of like a used car salesman fast talking uh and ideally I can get my buddy out of here cuz like he doesn't deserve to get his head chopped off okay so things that could go wrong Loads. Loads. She could decide to take you all prisoner. She could decide just to execute your old buddy. Do D or Lafrange have any other ideas of what could go wrong? Please extend this laundry list. I really want to double down on the competition. It's so nice. So what is the... What could go wrong here? She's insulted and has uh, all of the prisoners executed simultaneously. Okay, that's a possibility. He recognizes one of us. Oh, I like it. That's, these are all good suggestions. So, let us build your dice pool. First of all, We've already you've already determined this is something that you're skilled at because of your occupation in giving orders. So that's one light die. That's good. Devil's bargain? You willing? Devil's bargain. Okay. Devil's bargain for the extra light die. Um She pays you with something that she takes from your friend. Something terrible. Does anyone else want to offer a devil's bargain? I got nothing. She gives us the crown, and there are no consequences. Not a devil's bargain. <laughs> There's oh, no, no, no perhaps, perhaps to feed on that. The crown is cursed. I want it more now. Okay, that is a fantastic devil's bargain. You get the extra die. But if you succeed, the crown is cursed. Which isn't, a, I'm, I'm bending the rules on devil's bargain, but that's so good that, you know, it's fine. Curses can be complex. <laughs> right. So, what uh, what do you think there, dumb? Any of those appeal to you? <laughs> Honestly, uh, I thought a sentence, and now I'm going to say it. Just because this guy was like a nice guy and would have done the same for me. I mean, that doesn't mean that I'm necessarily a nice guy. She can give me something terrible from presumably inside him or something. All right. Um, are you willing to risk your mind and body in order to succeed? You don't have to I in this case. Fair enough. Uh, I feel like, given the current circumstance, I am risking not only mine, but my friend's 
lives and livelihood. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that dark dice. All right. So you've got all three dice. Let's see what you get. I got a four. Dark die was a two, though. Excellent. So you succeed, but there's a complication. Okay. So she crooks a finger at your buddy because she caught the little exchange of glances and whatever between you two. And she has him led over and he thinks he's getting out. He's all pleased. He's like, yes. They're gonna. Oh, same. I'm just like. Ah. They're gonna. They're. She's. I'm gonna be the toll that she pays to him. She's like, very well. As you two clearly know each other, you may take him with you. And she, quick as can be, unsheaths her rapier, chops off his head, and hands it to you. Uh, thank you. I would like. I would not. You specifically to make a ruin roll. That's valid. <laughs> so, so a ruin a roll is a... whenever you witness or undergo something disturbing, you roll no. one dark die. If your dark die is higher than your current ruin, We'll add one to your ruin and see how the forest is warping you. Pretty sure my current ruin is one, so... Your current ruin is... Do you have any magic at all? Oh, no, I do have magic, so it's two. It's okay, yeah. I rolled a five, though, so, like, eh. Yeah, so, um... You're gonna... You're increased to three ruin. Let's see. How is this change... Oh, I have something here. So, as you see this, you kind of, for a moment, lose focus. And you have this intense feeling of impending doom. And literally, for a moment, it's just hard for your eyes to focus as she holds out your friend's head, holding it by its hair. Which I think is a legitimate reaction to seeing that happen. Yeah. Very well! You may pass. Can I do something terrible? Of course you can. This game is not going to last very long. It's I can trophy tell. dark. Okay. <laughs> it's in the so, name. I like. Uh, I imagine Dee cares about very uh, few people, but she does care about dumb. Uh, but yeah, she's like, and so she sees him look look at this head and look his face kind of. Pale, and she kind of walks over to the head, which is still being held, and just like moves the mouth, like, "Hi, Dom. It's fine. I'm totally good. I feel much better now." Dom is. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's like the shock <laughs> or what, but is actually going to laugh at that. I think my ruin just went up by one at this. <laughs> I have just witnessed something disturbing. <laughs> know how to make him feel better in a normal way. It couldn't just be like, here's a hug. It was like, don't worry, I feel so much better. A hug almost like solidifies it and makes it all real. This is just sort of like, ah, this is some freaking bullshit in a bullshit place. I had a terrible shirt too. Now it's gone. They have all this weight off their shoulders. Fortunately, it's all in their head now. <laughs> So the other prisoners that are there that were, like, going to plead with you, take us to, they see this, and they're like, mm, 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 mm. we'll take our chances. That's so metagaming here, the structure of Trophy Dark incursion, incursions is in rings. As you go through successive rings, you're getting, of the forest, you're getting closer to your goal. You have now completed... Ring one of five. Um, so we're going to go to ring two now. You are going down this rosy path that we noticed, that I mentioned earlier. 
that opens up into a pond-strewn woodland. There are just these little ponds everywhere. As you approach one of them, you see a flock of flamingos standing around it, all on one leg, as as they do. I can't. My fingers are not very good. One leg, yeah. I mean, I can't even cross my fingers. What am I even trying? And of course, as you get close, they scatter. The flamingos take off into the air. Um, but you notice something different about this pond water. It's not clear, crystal, beautiful water. It's dark. It's thick and bubbling. And there's this noxious haze that's kind of disorienting. What do you do? So I... Go ahead. I was say, I feel bad though. Can I borrow the head? I, I did want to ask, are we keeping the head first? Yeah, like it would be rude to. Yeah, we don't get through it. Turn then, down payment. It was a, toll. a perfectly good severed head, sure. Uh, but yeah, I'm not using it. You can borrow. Thank you. I'm gonna dunk him in the pond water. Okay. What? <laughs> As you do that, it bubbles and burns, and you can see acid eating away into that flesh. D, I would like you to make a ruin roll now. Just roll one dark die, and let's see if it gets a five or a six. I got a two, and I don't know what that means. That means that you do not take any additional ruin. It means that... that tracks. You're like... So tell us how yeah. this is okay for you. Just, like, as the acid begins to eat away, I imagine there'll be a point where she just yanks it out, and then it's just a skull, and she's like, ta-da! Now we have a, now we have a paperweight. I call him Steve. Amusing. <laughs> Kitty! Kitty! Um, Lafrange, the haze, the, the noxious fumes from these thick acidic ponds was starting to give you ghostly hallucinations. Oh, yes. Yeah, you... What do you see? So as we move towards this pond, Lafrange is too engrossed in, in his own pain. He's walking by the sides of the path, grasping onto the vines, piercing his skin with the thorns. And yelping at his pain, and he sees the pawns and moves forward. And realizing as D is, is dipping a skull in acid, groans. And the smells enter his body. And he looks up, focusing with his one eye, unsure what he's seeing, but these forms begin to take shape. And these forms, they are like that of jesters in the courts. They're holding up small animals and juggling them, but the animals are not happy. And they drop the animals into the water. Or acid, I suppose. This sounds as tracks, this tracks. But you're able to find your way forward. Um, kind of weaving around these ponds. And as you're stumbling through the haze, suddenly appearing in front of you because it was hidden by all of the fumes coming out of all of these ponds, there's this decrepit old town square with broken cobbles, some long rotted timbers, and, but the str that's not the strangest part, because that kind of tracks a little bit, right? It kind of makes sense. No, the thing is that in the center of this 
abandoned old town square is this beautiful fountain that holds clean water, not like the, what you saw in the ponds before. And the centerpiece of the fountain where the water is being provided is a rose bush forged from wrought iron. And it has decorative. Em- but and even more decorative, the leaves are made of emerald and the roses are made of silver. And from the forest above you, from the canopy of the forest, a single ray of light breaks through the canopy to strike the largest rose at the top of the bush, making it shine this resplendent, beautiful, silver-white color. What do you all do? So we're going to loot this bush and then get cursed, right? That's yeah. the most <laughs> But we'll look really great and we'll have a lot of money doing it see that's what i'm thinking meat shields gonna start taking some i'm gonna approach the pond the <laughs> fountain first if, if i see dumb approaching i will approach with him okay Just, like look into it see if there's a bottom yeah yeah there's a there's a beautiful stone work smooth stone bottom to the fountain you know hold up the skull look over to d test it drop it alas splash <laughs> alas poor yorick i knew y'all right kind of in passing <laughs> yeah. sort of a co-worker <laughs> Alas, poor Yorick, I kind of knew you in passing. We were more like acquaintances. I wouldn't have invited you to, like, my birthday party, but if we passed each other, I would say, hey, it just goes on for five minutes. So Yorick's yes. head drops into the water and bubbles for just a moment because of whatever rem- remaining fluids Acid. and acids were in, the, were in the head. But other than that, just settles to the bottom. By the way, I'm welcome sorry. Blaine. Blaine is the writer of this incursion. So, oh, hi. hi! Thank you for this fantastic incursion. This is my second time running it, which tells you how much I like it. Um, so you've dropped Yorick's head in the water here in this fountain, but there's all these beautiful emerald leaves and silver roses, and especially that one really large one up at the top. What do you yeah. do? I'm going to... I'm going to step tentatively into the water. Okay. I'm going to, again, tilt back to uh, D and LaFrange. So I'll just yank them off and toss them to you. In the rest of this town square, is there any sort of hay or perhaps rubbish or rubble? The, the, the rubble, is, yeah, there's these old rotted timbers scattered around from whatever buildings used to be here. And certainly there's a few kind of broken old cobbles. Okay. So my character's plan is once once done, begins to toss the, the emeralds, any that I would catch slip from my fingers and lost into the alleyways. So that's a we'll 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 put that as a potential devil's bargain, as we as we as we do. Sounds that. like it might be a ruin reduction. Yes. That, oh oh, oh, I see what you're doing. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Presuming so, that the rose bush doesn't like eat me. Right. So if you can't. Gonna, oops, why can't I hold any of these? Lines? Why can't I hold all these? Yes, <laughs> I got you. Perfect. Thank you for clarifying that for me. Thank dumb. You. Apparently, I'm the one that was dumb. Um, I think it's a good idea, Lafrange. So. Um, dumb. Well, I think we're going to ask for a risk roll here. That's fair. This feels risky. I don't know what's risky about it, but it feels risky. So, so what you're hoping is to start taking off the roses and emeralds and, and throw the treasure to your companions, yes? Yeah. Um, Lafrange and D. What could go wrong here? Oh, Metal bush could eat him. Slips from the top of the fountain head and breaks his arms. <gasps> or if we're, if we'd like to be a little less tame, uh, once Dumb falls in the water, he gets a bit of a cold. 
very cold in the water. Okay. So, is this something that you're good at, Dumb? Uh, am I wrestling the bush? You tell me. Fair. Uh, I guess if they're... The roses are like you're rolling stuck skirmish in there or wreck like... <laughs> or finesse. <laughs> no, see, in all seriousness, you tell me. Yeah, if they're like yeah. stuck in there or whatever, like I've I've got good like leverage skills in the wrestling. Okay, this is so okay. So let's say yeah. Um, yeah. So you're gonna try to pull off the roses that way. So it's one light die. Are you first before we get to Devil's Bargain, which I always like to do last because it involves discussion? Are you willing to risk your mind or body? Who's even using this thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love how you. We've talked about this before, and it's not just in this game. How you fully embrace the drive it like you stole it theory of playing characters. Um, Eat myself into the abyss, make a story out of it. Right. So that's one dark and one light. What kind of devil's bargain do we want to offer you? So, so one possible one is, let me pull up something here that I was looking at a moment ago. Yes. Um, one possible one is that you're, as you are reaching in, you could see inside the iron rosebush an even more valuable prize that nope. makes you discard the idea of these but do D or Lafrange have any other devil's bargains to offer well of course the rosebush is made of roses scratch him up if he didn't watch himself ooh it could be that the roses aren't actually made of silver. They're just a silver color. Uh, yes, and he gets How all this. Yeah, he gets all of this, and it turns out to be for nothing. That is a possibility. Um, any ideas, Val? I mean, uh, B. Then we go through all this trouble, only to realize that it, they're just cheap-ass glass. You know, like, you get the Oh, that's even better. Drinks. I like that even... I withdraw. <laughs> I withdraw my suggestion... Because them being glass is better. But in any case, it's up to uh, Dumb here. I'm not, by the way, I'm not calling my friend Dumb for those who have joined. That is his, Val is playing D and he is playing Dumb. And they are both searching for treasure so they can get their brother out of Barstool Prison. Which Lafrange thinks is a waste of time because he's heard that the, that the brother is already here in the forest. Which they're like, nah, he's in prison. That's all you're going to get him out. Well, so maybe... So, dumb. Oh, we'll see what happens. Although, at the rate y'all are going, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> um, so, dumb, any of those I'm, you like? Uh, I love the roses. Not I love the roses being just garbage instead of actual precious metals. Uh-huh. But I'm... There being a more precious treasure inside it is more ominous. I love how you... See... I, I offered that one specifically to you because I know that you always go for that. Well, Chase, have you considered being real greedy? You know what? I haven't. <laughs> uh... Okay. So, yeah. So, more precious treasure. So, you've got all three. So, um, all three. Let's see what you get. Who rolls less than three dice in this game? I don't even understand. Well, sometimes you don't have the skill, but, you know. Fair. Uh, I got a six. Dark die is a five. So you tell me how you succeed, first of all, in getting these treasures. Yeah, so uh, probably reach on, try and, like, uncork it, basically. It's a little bit harder, so I kind of have to, like, wedge an elbow in there and pop it off. Might, like, scratch my clothes or something, but I'm wearing long sleeves because it's February. Uh, start tossing some roses I would have been a little bit more wary once uh, Lafrange started just dropping them into nowhere, but I'm not focused on that right now. I'm focused on this, like, fancy crap in the middle of the thorn ball. So let's real quick resolve Lafrange's attempt to kind of yeet the silver roses off into the forest. 
Um, let's just roll one light die and see what you get. I got a four. You got a four. It is less than your current ruin, therefore your ruin goes back down to four. Excellent. And sure enough, yeah, it's just as we described. Why can't I hold up? Oh, there's too many. And as they fall into the um, grass and other growth here, they literally just disappear down into the into the uh, to the plants. But you don't seem to notice. D, nah, D is watching for more treasure, and dumb inside. What treasure do you see in the center of this iron rose bush? Hmm. What treasure do I see in the center of this rose bush, fellow adventurers? The diadem, of course. Uh, shit. <laughs> a pair of a pair of crystalline slippers. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. Incidentally, probably D size. I don't know. <laughs> so, with that in mind, we're gonna go make another risk roll. Yeah, we is. So, um. Same, you get the same skill as before. Um, you are def at this point, you are definitely reaching far enough in that you are risking your body because these thorns are sharp. They're made of heckin' metal. Yeah. So, a new devil's bargain here. The We're not going to go with the same one as before because you are in there. Say, perhaps I get... This is my suggestion, and if other people have ones, I would also love to hear them. Say I get caught on the rose bush, not cut, but caught. Okay. And something approaches. I I I approve. If if that's what you want to do, I will never tell you not to have a monstrosity appear. I am also interested in any other devil's bargain because <laughs> this is my favorite kind of competitive gameplay. Right. Who can come up with the weirdest, creepiest thing? No, 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 no. Let me. I take back what I said because if we have Erex in this group, and uh, yeah, yeah. So come at the champ. You best not miss. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I don't. We're no. not looking for the weirdest, creepiest, scariest thing because Erex will, will will. So you know. I I would like to say I love the idea of introducing another character to the scene. Yeah, well, I've got so some monsters. Are quite nice. Could be a monstrosity. Could be a fellow traveler. Could be both. Yeah. Could be one, and you think it's one, and it's actually the other. Could be the monstrosity, but it's actually a friendly uh, traveler, and that, then it eats us. So to be clear, in D and D, that is totally my mo. Is that was you think they're a monster, but they're actually not bad, and the real monsters were us all along. Just ask Val. The Val's real played. monster was Val all along. Well, that's also true. So accurate. <laughs> so, um, which of those do you prefer? I would like either of them. You feel free to uh, no, present. No, no, no. You, you the. Well, I like not knowing if it's okay. going to be a monster. So, or a so okay, I see what you're so saying. So either or. So introduce we'll a new character, and we'll see what. Okay, so, um. You got all three dice. Let's see what you got. Ew. Yahtzee. Uh, I got a six. Dark Die was a three. Okay. So you reach in and you extract. Well, you tell us. You tell us about how you succeed. I'm sorry. Yeah. So we got enough of the roses off that there's maybe a whole. That, like, if I could somehow dislocate my shoulders, I could get into. So I kind of, like. To like wind my way in, like tuck my head so I can get deep enough, get one arm on it, sort of rock it a bit, eventually get my other arm in, and now I'm just, just my legs are sticking parallel the ground out, just kind of like kicking a little bit. Finally, there's a loud metallic ka chunk. I got it! And then I sort of well start wiggling my way backwards. Emphatic try. Also, because I had forgotten what it was, they they were like bolted to the ground or something. I don't know. Are you stuck? Forgot they were down. shoes. <laughs> Are you stuck in there? Uh, nah. I th um, 
Do you want me to pull you by the pants? Yeah, yeah, actually. The frange comes up to the fountain and slips a little bit in the water, reaches up and straight for Dom's pantalones. So Is this I... an attempt to pull me out or pull my pants off? I'm doing my best. <laughs> be, yeah, but at which? Uh, this might be Rolls an attempt. one light die? Mm, I think I'll let you have this one. I'll try to pull you out. Okay, all right. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe it's too soon to uh, uh, make it too obvious. Okay. Um, yeah, I won't even ask for a, a risk roll there. You could just kind of pull them out. Because the reason this is important is because as you do it, you hear a skittering sound from the trees. Like squirrels? No, not like Ugh. squirrels. A glistening writhing creature about the size of a very large dog but with eight legs and mandibles and it's it's not just skittering as I said it's right you can see its form it's twisting and turning within itself as it glistens in the in the sun through the canopy Moving suddenly closer to you all, what do you do? I just I would want like to clarify. To... Whilst we've been, whilst they've been trying to like get Dub out, I've been skipping around this fountain, throwing up jewels into the air like a little shower of gems. Utterly delighted. As a rules note, in trophy. While you can certainly fight with, for example, the bandits in Ring 1, fighting combat with monstrosities will lead to your death. You can do risk rolls to try to do other things, right? But you can't just, like, straight up fight them because they are monsters and you are not. Well, you're monsters in a whole different way, but not in this way. You are not monstrosity. Kind of monster. You are monsters, but not monstrosity. So anyway, that's just a rules <sighs> note. Don't try to go up and, like, fight it. That's all that I'm saying. Can I do something terrible that of probably isn't going to work? That's what... Obviously. Yes, that's, of course. That's every role in this game. Can I'm I... looking at your rituals and I just see ideas, <laughs> oh, ideas, and... ideas. Oh, yeah. Can yeah, I look... grab a piece of wood that was around and I'm going to throw up one of the flowers and whack it like a baseball and yell, FETCH! As I do. <laughs> yes, yes you can. This is not a risk reduction roll for you, but if you were at higher ruin, it could be. Um, so, first of all... Oh yeah, there's a risk roll here. First of all, is this something that you're skilled at because of your occupation or background? Any of your four skills apply here, do you think? Uh, I am skilled in madness, which this seems like pure madness. You know what? Let's go with it. <laughs> Are you willing to risk your mind or body in order to succeed? Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, I should have noted before we go further, before we get to the Devil's Bargain, just straight up, if the character doesn't succeed here, what could go wrong? <laughs> How much time do you have? Uh, what, do, what do dumb and... Uh, and Lafrange think. Obviously, it could draw the noise could draw the attention of the puppy, uh, but the puppy, the puppy is not trained to play <laughs> fetch and just wants to um, num, num. play with these bones. Yes, I'm um, num num, as it were. Okay. <gasps> I, oh, I should have thrown the skull. I just realized. Do you want to throw the skull instead? Yeah, can I change it to the yeah, skull? Just use the skull. Um, can I? Hear Baseball, quick the skull and yell fetch. Listen, people of a certain age may remember frog baseball from the 90s. <laughs> frog baseball! <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So you're playing face baseball with the severed head of your brother's friend. Um, that's not terrible at all. Um what else could go wrong? I think one thing that could go wrong, I will just say, 
is that the the monstrosity could instead not follow that and maybe not attack you but take your treasure <gasps> it could attack you <laughs> um I have something that could go wrong yes 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 I don't like my Happy idea is very excited to play and while D is quite the quite the batter there's a few too many buildings around here and the skull bounces off one of them and clonks D in the head knocking her out <laughs> The spider puppy creature comes and slathers all over. And she awakens to a nasty feeling. This, these are things that could definitely be wrong here. Um, let's look at a potential. So you're risking. Your, we said you're risking your mind and body. You said yes. Yes. And we said you, you're skilled in madness. Sure. Um, and now finally, a devil's bargain here. Um. So here's a devil's bargain. You could, uh, I think you could just twist a foot or some yeah. other way, somehow injure yourself some way. Um, that wouldn't be ruin. It would just be a, a kind of like fictional thing that you have to deal with going on. Um, I yeah. was, I was seeing the same thing. She, Toss or makes a hit with the bat and throws her arm out. It's an amazing, an amazing bat, but she pulls a muscle. Yeah, yeah, and you would, again, it wouldn't be ruined. It'd just be, you have to, in the future, we'll have to account for that in your actions. Like, it might lead to risk rolls to do normal things in the future. How are if, you going to carry if you want, If you want that. Oh, that... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I went straight for the heart of it. If you have another Devil's Bargain idea, or if, Ch if Dumb has one... I was thinking perhaps the puppy does play fetch, but brings back the wrong stick, per se. A different head that speaks. Yeah, just a different head. <laughs> a different head. Okay. Could be. <laughs> um, do you like either of these, or do you just want to stick with the two dice that you have... I kind of want a different head, because I want to know how many skulls are just casually lying around. Okay, so let's do... Maybe this one talks. Let's do this. it has to be a skull? So, yeah, yeah that, who that's... said it had to be lying around? It could retrieve it from whence heads that, come. That's a complication <gasps> that comes. So roll your three dice, your two dark... Or sorry, your two light and one dark, and let's see what you get. Okay, I got a six on my dark dice, and a six on my light dice, and a four on my other one. So, your highest is a six, but one of those is a dark. So, I'm going to describe the complication. You describe the, the devil's bargain part of it, I mean. Well, actually, first of all, you just describe how you succeed, and then I'll tell you about the skull that comes back. You describe how this goes. Uh, I flash back. You're in Wonderland High School. It's the softball team. I'm at the base. I don't know softball. <laughs> the batter throws it to me, and I whack it. And the same thing happens. So I throw up the skull, and I whack it, and I hear the imagined sound of the applause of our parents and brother at this baseball game. Softball game. And it just sails through the air in this beautiful arc. There's a rainbow mess <laughs> of this guy's skull. <laughs> As I yell, fetch! And it does. It skitters off this writhing, glistening, eight-legged monstrosity. Also, I can't believe that our friend Abby just totally went for this of course, Val's playing softball. Yeah, Abby yeah. gets it. Of course, yeah, yeah. No, softball. I get. I get it. So, <laughs> anyways, so this thing, and when it comes back, it's not carrying the skull. It's not. It's not bringing Yorick's head back. The head that it's bringing back in its mandibles looks exactly like D. D. Your ruin goes up by one, as noted. So your ruin is five now. 
by the way, you have now unlocked that same reduction role. In the future, you can act in the interests of the forest to destroy treasure or sabotage your friends trying to reduce your, your ruins so that you can try to survive. But something else happens. As you see this, you have the strangest sensation, D, that you're changing. You, are, you have begun a metamorphosis. You're changing into something perhaps beautiful, perhaps terrible, perhaps both. But you're just overcome by this feeling as this monstrosity, this terrible creature, brings this back to you, leaves it there in front of you, and then skitters back off into the underbrush. I look at them and go, now we're triplets! <laughs> I'm gonna be coming down with the the shoes for you. Hop down. See the dog skittering off. Be distracted by that. Look back at you. Ah! Yes! Nice animal. Really we're... nice. Yep. No, great at fetch, though. He got me the wrong skull. Yep. Does, does the Got skull appear shoes. as D to all of us? Yeah, yeah, all of you see D holding up what looks like an exact copy of her head. I would like you both to make ruin rolls. Fuck. Yeah, sure. No, damn it. Not, not, not D, just Lafrange and um, D already made hers. I got a five, which oh. is plus my ruin. Yes, your ruin goes back up to five. So Lafrange sees the skull and... With his good eye and his good hand, he covers and looks again. Covers and looks again. Turns around and contemplates life, I suppose. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to tell you something else that happens to you in a moment. But, uh, Dum, what about your ruin roll? I got a two. Like, I think at this point, I'm full just trauma blocking. And just kind of, like, shock lapping again. Nerves and this, this is just fine. Like crazy shit happens here, and it's it's just weird stuff that makes no sense, and that's fine. And D's able to level us out by seeing the humor in it all. Well, perhaps levels you out, Lafrange. Yeah, Lafrange will be fine. As you gaze with your good eye you realize that you can no longer trust your eye. As you look around with your one good eye, colors and shapes distort, shift into each other, meld into each other, and nothing you see is entirely trustworthy as, as an indication of reality. This is probably, in some way, I think, reminiscent of dream navigation to you. Oh, most definitely. We're still here in the courtyard, and all the buildings have begun to coalesce and meld together. Doors become windows. Even the D's and the Dumbs seem to join and split. Clearly. We have now completed Ring 2. Let us move to Ring 3. And then after Ring 3, if you're still alive, which is iffy because two of you are at 5 Ruin right now, um, <laughs> then we'll take a break. So as you continue forward th through this path, you come, it leads you directly to a cave entrance, and out of the cave is billowing fog. As you enter the cave, there are many twisting passages all alike. How do you try to find your way forward? Oh yeah, by the way, D, I got you some shoes. I don't know if they'll fit. I just we immediately can. drop everything I'm doing. I'm like, 
I'm gonna pick up all of the gems that you just dropped. <laughs> yeah, just like everything gets dropped, including my own face. I'm, I'm not picking like, that shit up. Drop it, and I'm like. Uh, and I'm like, they're so great! And I, like, immediately throw off whatever shoes I'm wearing and, like, put the new ones on. And then I bring up my own head and, like, pop it back on the shoulder where I was carrying it and be like, this is a great vacation. Working vacation, but yeah. Yeah, we'll find him, maybe. So, uh... I turn, I turn to D and I say, Dumb. I need you to guide me. My eye. My eye can't see well anymore. Yeah, no problem. Uh, D, oh, no. you're the smart one. Which way should we go? Okay. And then I'll guide you. I got you. But, like, she's got to get me. Okay. That way. That way. Cool. Yeah, I I'm did. Gonna... I was. Trying Hold to think LaFrange's of <laughs> hand, not like grabbing it, just like hand out, just light guiding. I've got a little sweat on my fingers. Gross. Um, <laughs> as you're going forward, you are following some of these paths in the caves. And you find a body in this Great. dark tunnel. And the first one has Yorick's face on it. Unexpected. Right. Uh, so just so you know, because your eyes are a little messed up, that, that is in fact the face that we melted off in that uh, pond a little bit back. Looks a little bit like you. Yeah, I guess we get similar noses. Yeah, uh, you, you have like better fashion sense though. This, I mean, just still wearing the, an ugly outfit. He did literally get executed for that. I know. I mean, kind of had it coming. Yeah. I, I, I wander close to York and I poke the body. Just you right in the chest. Back. Yeah, I'm like, cool. I've had a sudden sense of morbid curiosity come over me, and I, it's inexplainable. Uh, no offense, I haven't known you for that long, but it don't seem that sudden. No. This tracks. I would like to... to summon the spirit of York. Just for a little conversation. Oh my gosh. First okay. thing he says, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so, this is fantastic because you're at five ruin. Um, exactly. Yes. So... Let's let's see what happens here. So first of all, there's a dark die because you have a ritual which automatically risks your mind and body. Fuck. Is this something that you are skilled at because of your occupation or background? Yes, I must summon persons for contracts quite often. Send many letters and many many pigeons. Or Summoning is my fault. Hey? Ravens. All right. So let's a go with that one. Is a contract. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? Like. Well, I, I don't know what that meant, but I feel like it's a reference to something. Um, do you want a devil's bargain, or do you want to go with what you got? I always want a devil's okay. bargain. Okay, all right. I should I should just like stop asking that question, shouldn't I? With my friends, my friends are always <laughs> like, "Of course I do." Not at least they want to hear it. They may not always take it, which is fair, totally fair. Um, so a devil's bargain here. What could that? look like well um one it is look like yorick but not necessarily be Yorick. you could yeah there you you could attract the attention of some other spirit d you look like you had something no i was just enjoy i always flash back to the the whole thing when you call out to the dead you don't know who answers maybe it's or maybe yorick yorick picks up and is as dub said what the hell I just is so unhelpful because he's super focused on the fact that we let him be executed and then melted his face. Yeah. You know, I got to admit... about the face melting, I think. <laughs> I don't know how ghosts work. You know what? If they're a spirit, you never know. Um, okay, so the devil's bargain is the spirit is not Yorick's. 
Well, I, I was saying, I was saying something. Yorick's not very helpful, and okay, should should failure arise, Yorick screams from beyond in the dam. So, the, yeah, the the devil's bargain from that happens regardless of your your success. So, yes. sort of, I mean, it's a complication. So, I think that the complication is that regardless of you, if you even if you succeed, mm-hmm. Yorick is not going to be inclined to work with you. I think that's fair. But it's up to you if you want it. No, we need to get out of this maze, don't we? Mm. Let's let's go with the the wrong spirits. I know exactly what this is. Okay, so three dice then. One dark and two light. If I roll a six, I'm done, right? If you roll a six on the dark die, yes, although I have a way of handling... Like, you don't have to leave the call or anything like that. But, oh, no. I, I, I understand yeah. what I'm getting into. I just want okay. to know my... Uh, yes. If you roll a six, six on the, the dark die... You are you have dead. a one in six chance of being d- done here. On the light dies, I'm fine. If the As long as they are... As long as the dark die is not a six, you're fine. All right. Fine in the sense of the ruin. I have a six as my highest on the light and a five on my dark. Oh, so close. So close. No, you succeed. Tell us, first of all, what it looks like as you summon a spirit here. Spirit of York. I crouch down. My legs spread as I move directly onto the shins of York's body. And I put my hand on his face and my other hand on the symbol of Onos. And I call out to my gods. Let York see once again. Let York speak to us so that we may find our way as we are blinded. And when I release my hand from York's face, their eyes open. And a voice comes forth from the body. But as noted, it is not York's voice, which Dumb would recognize immediately were it so but instead this voice is the voice of Onos the dead eye Fuck. tell us that ain't Lef- my dude that's not your dude yep <laughs> Lafrange Onos the de- is Onos the dead eye a human or something more it's a god you said right Yes, Onos the Dead Eye was a short man, a thief. They would hunt for treasures, and until one day, while traveling through some intrepid noble's castle, they slipped and a crossbow pierced them directly in the eye. They howled out in pain until they flew out the window and into the moat below, to which they were dragged down by the spirits and ascended. And as this voice speaks to you, you recognize it as Onos' voice. And it's you hear this voice echoing through the caverns. You are damned! I'm quite aware of that. How do we leave this place? <laughs> Not with your lives. And I, this, I look this around. Guy's a lot less helpful than we would have hoped. I look around and I say, "What about that bugs? That I leave with theirs? What? What about the? I, I'm sorry. What was that? What? What about the bug? Could I leave with that life? You are already an insect to me, the immortal. I'm going to lean over to D and just kind of whisper, they've got a weird relationship. It doesn't seem healthy. They should probably re-identify a few things. Power dynamics real off. That's just really off. You know, I you, you hate to see it. happens though yeah be lost 
forevermore. And the spirit swirls and goes back down. That didn't work. They seem lovely. I, yeah, they had a real great smile. How long have you two known each other? I was introduced to Onos by a man with pins in his eyes. On the streets, they raved at me. Told me I was to do great things. That's my loss was not in vain. And I have traveled, I've, I've decorated my body in, in this fool's name. And what guidance, what sight does the dead eye give us but nothing? I would say something about love being blind, but uh, the decorations yeah. look nice. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not all in vain. The decorations are nice, and uh, I get a look. And a look, and you know, you walk into a bar, someone's probably gonna give you a free drink. Also, like, we're not more lost than we were, so like. No, we're the exact same amount of lost that we were before. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure I'm really up to uh, talking to Yorick right now. Things ended a little bit sticky on us. I'm gonna be honest. Quite literally, before we melted his face off. A little bit after that, to be honest. Yeah. At least his face is fine here. Okay. Yeah, let's keep walking away from that face, eh? I think that's fair. Yeah, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna lean over and be like, okay, bye! <laughs> just close eyes and just be like, okay, bye! <laughs> gonna, like, look back <laughs> over my shoulder, like, eight times while we're walking to make sure that <laughs> it doesn't follow you. But as you're navigating through, just feeling your way forward in the darkness. Again, helping uh, Lafrange walk. Right. Um, you come out of the cave into a field. But scattered throughout this field in groups of two or three, there's little sets of corpses everywhere. Great. You see ghosts in the fog. What looks like ghosts. It could just be Peridolia. Peridolia? Doila? How do you say that? When you think you... Like when you think you see shapes oh, yes. and clouds and yeah, it's, yeah, just, it's really just random shapes. Yeah. Um, except that you are confident, first of all, dumb, it looks for sure like you see wisps of fog that just seem like you and D, except that when you see it, your fog, your your fogelganger, <laughs> as soon as it has its its back turned, D plunges a knife. The the D's fogelganger betrays and stabs yours in the back. How does that make you feel? Uncomfortable, in a word. Uh, I'm gonna, again, sort of just trauma block that one for a moment. Just sort of, this is, is high stress. It's, uh, I'm gonna make that ruin roll. See, You're uh, gonna make that ruin roll, that. yeah. Yeah, we're gonna see how well you manage that. Well, I feel less less good about it than, uh, what than is I was roll? implying. Uh, I rolled a five. Oh yeah, your ruin goes up to four. So I've yeah. got two characters at five and one at four. This is great. We're only in ring three. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I don't trust D. She's, she's never led me astray on purpose before. Uh, but it's one of those things where people people do shitty things under stress, and we're all stressed out, and. I, I don't want to do a shitty thing. Oh, God, would I do a shitty thing if I'm too stressed out? It, it'll it be fine. We'll be fine. It's fine. This is not the uh, actual emotion, the dumbest feeling. This is what he is saying it to himself to avoid the fact that we're just going to kill each other and eat each other's faces because, like, we're already hyper lost. Uh, like, we're not lost in the cave anymore, but we got to go back through that at some point. Um, It'll be fine. D, 
you hear a whispered voice. You can't quite make out what it says. You can't quite understand the words. But you hear, and for a moment, think you see the form of your imprisoned brother. It's his voice. What do you do? I am. Uh, I go like, Chester! Chester! This is the reason you get imprisoned! You mumbled at your trial! No one can hear you! Kind of just sort of got to turn to D. <laughs> Her name was Dan. How are you, uh, Tweedledam? How you doing, sis? Oh, uh, yeah. I don't... Mm. 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 I see you, Fog. I know your game. I know your game, Fog. Yeah, Fog's got like, game. I'm just arguing with the Fog on the mists and stuff like that, and I turn around and go... Where? Either Chester... Is walking around, all mumbly. Like he does. Like he does. This is why he went. Did you mumble not guilty at your trial? They just hear guilty, and then that's how you go to jail. <sighs> anyway, he's either mumbling. We did riff over him a lot. Yeah, he just, just you know. He doesn't have a strong personality. He does. He doesn't. You gotta be assertive in trial situations. <sighs> They've been I mean, over Percy this. might have brought something out of him. He might be a little bit more. Yeah, maybe that was why he was... Well, he's still mumbling. Maybe that's why he was power walking away, because he was like, I'm not ready for that. Wait, you know, that, I get that. But anyway, he's either here or the fog is trying to mess with our brains. Yeah, I which, can see that. It's a 50-50. I love it when Val switches to an American accent. It just yeah. happens. This wasn't planned. I just started doing it. Now we're in this. Hooray! How yeah, I'm gonna just like sort of pat D on the back, comfort still leading uh, Lafrange, but also like maybe slightly shifting D. Like I'm not in front of her, but I'm not like you're not quite willing to like give her your back her. either. Yeah, I, I just yeah. as a reminder, D, you have reduction rolls available to you to act in the interests of the forest if you want to uh, reduce your ruin because. Trying to decide if we should call for a ruin roll here. I think we'll hang on because that's a tempta it's more of a temptation than it is a terror. <laughs> Immediately like stab you in the back with no context. <laughs> um Lafrange, are these sh these ghosts and they kind of melt as they as they move forward, they kind of melt into a corpse. The ghost itself does. The ghost, the 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 fog. The wispy fog and the form. <laughs> Hallucinations and mirages. Right. But one of them looks like your father. And your father was... You see your father, the pig farmer, slaughtering your favorite pig from when you were a child. What do you do? Grew up on a farm. This that happened man to pigs. Was cruel. He took an unhealthy enjoyment out of killing the poor animals. It was not enough that he merely slaughtered them, but he made me stand there. Is this a memory? A nightmare? I cannot tell which. The knife which he cut the pig's throat with was the same which he cut the flesh from it at the table. So here we're going to conclude ring three. We are, I will tell you that the next, tell you all, especially D and Lafrange, as we enter ring four, you may be called upon to make ruin rolls that could be your end, just as a note. But this is the fun. 
So, we're going to take a very short break. Everybody take your chance to uh, go take care of whatever need, quick needs they have. Um, and I will be refreshing my wine. And we'll be back in probably five-ish minutes, maybe a little bit less. We can do it quick. It shouldn't hopefully take, well, depending on what happens. Um, but we'll be right back. The forest has nearly claimed its trophies. Welcome back, everyone. So, just to recap, we have progressed through three of the five rings. At this point, Lafrange, who is at five ruin, has his one good eye is basically tripping balls. That's an experience. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 D is convinced that she is metamorphing, metamorphosizing. I don't know the right word. Changing into something else. And dumb. I can't remember what was yours. Oh yeah, you occasionally are overcome with doom. doom. Oh yeah, oh, yes. yeah. That's the doom. Yes, that is the that I think that's a that's a fair assessment. And you are at four ruin, and the other two at five. So the next time you witness something disturbing, could be your end. So you will want if you want your character to try to make it a little bit further. Um, so by, just as a note, if your character gets the six ruin, that doesn't mean that you're done role play, playing, unless you want it to be, in which case it's totally fine. You can just sit here and watch. Um, it just means that you can't participate in any more f roles. Like anything else that happens is just, you can't affect anything uh, mechanically and things like that. In other words, you can still, you know, but you are, like, you are for sure lost. We'll see what happens. Um, okay. So you have journeyed into the Rosenwald to find the treasure at its center so you can ransom your brother out of prison. Although Dee is pretty sure she just saw him here. Couldn't quite hear him, but he was mumbling. Um, let's see. Ring four. As you progress into the forest, this dense underbrush keeps getting thicker and taller and thicker and taller and it's somehow the force is just getting larger here until you see a squirrel and the squirrel is your size and it's not that the forest has gotten larger it's that you have gotten so much smaller. What do you do when you see this? I despise squirrels. Fair. Well, Out of character suppose. note, these are not the monstrosities like the one before or... The one ahead. Doesn't mean I don't see. I them. understand. I, yeah, yeah. I just mean that it's not the. It doesn't have the same mechanical effect of if you fight it, you will die. That's all. Oh, I could wrestle a squirrel. No, I'm not gonna. I would like. Uh, I support these decisions. I support the wrestling of the squirrel. <laughs> Say, twins. These vermin are known for hoarding. They hoard food. They hoard leaves. You suppose they hoard something else? Treasure? Jewels? Of the sort. I mean, I could suppose that. I could, yeah, but it's, I thought that's what we're doing. So, we gonna ask it to take it us back to its hoard, or...? Mm. <sighs> I'm afraid, should I talk to this beast, I may insult it. I could talk to a squirrel. Squirrel! If you'd be so kind. Listen, I just want to say that Val just randomly shouting squirrel is the most Val thing. Squirrel! Put that on yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so. Squirrel! Um, 
here's the thing. This squirrel doesn't look healthy. Its skin is oily and matted. Is one of you going to go up and talk to it? I will talk to the squirrel. For D. I have yelled it already. D. It's gonna be As you're yelling, behind. squirrel! <laughs> it turns squirrel? around and it smiles at you. And unlike squirrel teeth, its teeth are needles. And there's way too many of them. They're just crowding out of its mouth. So many teeth. Too many teeth. Teeth. I hate that. Sharp, sharp teeth. Also, unlike every time that Chase has said, I hate that, in one of these games, Dumb says that out loud. <laughs> um, Dumb, why don't you make a ruin roll for me? Deal. It was a two. All right, you're fine. Um, as it stands, I could maybe take this as long as it doesn't bite me. D, what do you say to the squirrel? That's a lot of teeth to brush. Anyway, do you have gold? Gold? Jewels? A polished piece you. of waste, perhaps. A polished piece of wa- a polished turd. Um, me though. I would say. Oh, so the the squirrel looks at you and says, between its abundant needle-like teeth, you must speak. To the one who lies ahead. Now by lies ahead. Yeah. Is that an entendre? (laughs) I'm sorry. You're forgiven. What my friend here means is, do they lay in the grass ahead or do they... Lie on the ceiling. No. Or not. Though what lies in the grass ahead may prove useful to you all. And with that, it scatters up a gigantic tree that stretches off into the sky. Among the many other trees that also stretch off into the sky. And ahead, you see... In the thorns, in the brambles, more bodies. But these bodies look like a well-equipped group of travel, travel hunter, uh, treasure hunters. Um, I think that one of them looks like somebody that D recognizes. D, who do you recognize? Which... Who does this body resemble? This body resembles the only person in the entire kingdom that could make a good grilled cheese. (laughs) That was my breakfast. (laughs) And now he lies dead on the ground. And that is the first time you've seen Dee look mildly sad about anything. She's like, no, Steve, while searching his pockets for loot. <laughs> <laughs> it's Brain what he would have wanted. Proposed in regards to. So I'm going to suggest that this is a great place for a risk roll. Um, what is it you're hoping to find here? Uh, I am hoping to find... Money! Okay. I, I was going to say, like... A clue to where our brother is, and then I was like, money. <laughs> like, on the one right. hand, he might be here. On the other hand, bail. Yeah, bail. So, Dumb and Lafrange, what could go bad here? The bodies are sized like normal people. Yes, just very far away. Are we sure they're dead? 
They don't. They're not that far away. They're just up ahead of you in the ramp. Well, she, it's not that far ahead of D because she's running her hands through his pockets. Yes, but okay. So one thing that could go wrong is they could actually not be dead, yeah. or perhaps just taking a undead. snooze and does a little roll over. Okay. Uh, dumb. Any ideas? They ain't dead. I think another thing that could go wrong is that D could uh, find something terrible in the pocket. Or something else could come along while she's distracted. D. Is this something that you're skilled at because of your occupation or background? Do you Is one of your four skills apply here? I do not think so. All right. Are you willing to risk your mind or body to succeed? Am I willing to risk my mind and body for God? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> keep it in mind you're at five ruin. So just making sure you know the stakes. That's all. I'm not trying to dissuade you. Gold. Okay. Devil's bargain here. Um... First of all, I'm going to give the opportunity to Lafrange. Lafrange. Yes, yes. Well, see, there is gold in the pocket, but it's too big to carry. I just want to point out that we could tie a devil's bargain to a risk reduction roll for you. I've been trying to figure that one out. So, I think that the devil's bargain could be that you see and are able to grab the treasure before D, or the, whatever's in the pockets, before D does. Yes, That's yes, a possible I'm devil's listening. bargain for D. Which, this is up to D to accept her or not. Like, it doesn't have to. Um, right now she just got the one dark die, so I think it's pretty likely. Uh, Dumb, do you want to offer one? Because she's probably going to take at least some devil's bargain. I... I can see as a risk reduction that I go to aid D as they're pulling this large gold coin out of the pocket that I accidentally topsy-turvy and it goes up, up, up. Hmm. That one would probably be a risk roll that could also be a risk reduction. I could combine them. If you succeed, it's a risk reduction. Yeah. Um, that's a possibility. Any of these sound uh, okay to you, D? What do you like? Uh, which one is the risk reduction? That would Lafrange. affect... So... Oh, yeah, it would affect Lafrange, but uh, which yeah, one is that one? That would be... Um, if you the could, Devil's Bargain is that Lafrange is going to try to cast Topsy-Turvy on it. You could also do that. But so that that's oh, yeah, so you also you want the gold. <laughs> yeah, you could... Yeah. So the Devil's Bargain, here's a similar one. Devil's bargain is that you dis that uh, you try to do it by casting topsy turvy on the body, and the treasure goes with it. Out. No, no, the you can see the the body the pocket sagging with treasure, but as the body floats up into the sky. I really want to do that one. Okay, so you're casting. So we're going to change your wrist roll to your casting topsy turvy. So in that case, you also get a, a light die because you are skilled in rituals. I am. So you can roll all three dice. Let's we'll see what happens. <gasps> Again, uh, my dark die got a six and my light die got a six. Are you dead? So let's all pause for a moment. <laughs> let's all zoom in on this moment here. D. What does it look like when you try to cast Topsy Turvy? Because you're just trying to do this to get the uh, uh, treasure to fall out of the pockets. Uh, I kind of rub my hands together and hover them over the body and start mumbling something that sounds like I'm talking backwards and 
try to twist and topsy-turvy the body. The other two of you see this, and by the way, guess what's coming up for you two? Um, oh, no. oh, yeah, it's pretty disturbing to see your friend like this. First of all... Friend slash sister. Friend slash... <laughs> twin sister, no less. Smoke emanates from her mouth and nose with every exhalation. D, you start to feel your lungs get uncomfortably warm. And you realize that you are turning into something. But what you are turning into is a rose bush. And you feel yourself sprouting out thorns. Your face turns up and turns into a rose. The forest has claimed you as its trophy, as a wild rose. You are no longer the young woman searching for her br brother or for the the treasure to ransom her brother from prison, but rather you have joined the forest. I would like Dumb and Lafrange to make... Just roll each, roll a dark die. Rolled a one. Rolled a five. And your ruin was a four? Your, yep. Both of your ruin is at five. Now, you, of course, have unlocked the risk reduction roll. I, I can imagine as this is happening, with my eyesight just useless, nothing, nothing makes sense here. I see D transform into this form of flowers and another flora. But their body shape remains the same, and where their head is a rose, each of, the, each of the petals speaks, and I realize that each of the roses was once a person. And the shapes of the people around, and their looks of terror as they rise within the forest, are known to me. And I cover my eyes and cower to the ground, crying in fear of what happens. What about you, D dumb? So this is a lot. Um, you know, one of those things where, never mind the literal uh, dead sister, dead, gone sister, uh, there is also the metaphorical of the point of all this was to reunite a family, and now it's fracturing more and more, and at this point... Is the only way to reunite this family to just die as well? I don't know. Maybe. But also, I don't. The forest. I don't want to like leave her behind, so I'm gonna like pluck the top rose, bring her with me. So first of all, as he does that, I would like to know, D. What v does your voice say in his mind? as he comes to pluck your head from your shoulders. I would like to point out this was... I am not the first one to carry D's head around today. That is literally true. <laughs> That's exactly basically what I was going to say. I was like, this is the second time my head has been carried around today. You can maybe flinch at that one, but like... Yeah, okay. I'm going to suggest that that's probably a ruin roll for... Bring it on, 17% chance. Yeah. Roll a dark die. Four. Four. So close. Very well. <laughs> you pluck off the petal that just... In the, within the face, you see print the petal, you see printed the face of your sister. And as you do this... You all hear a chuckle from above you in the trees. And you look up and you see slumbering in one of the branches. That's right. A fat cat. What do you do? I would probably comment that she would have found this funny, too. What about Lafrange? 
I like cats. Uh, I'm sorry. This is, to be clear, not the kind of, uh, again, metagaming here a little bit. Don't attack this cat. It won't, it, you, you will die. In addition to, we don't attack domestic animals. Um, in this case, this cat's extra, extra special. I'm just throwing yes. that out to you. Does a, do the stripes on this cat flicker in and out? Its eyes. Not yet. It's still asleep. Yeah. It's asleep. Oh, you just hear it kind of there? chuckling in its sleep. Sleeping on a branch. Nervous laughter. <laughs> it's just... Like, you He's know, so it's having relaxing. a... It's, it's, re- it's having a funny dream. <laughs> you do dream know. stuff. You ever get funny dreams? Sometimes. I wonder what's so funny up there. The view. Perhaps. You think it'd be annoyed if we woke it up? Yeah. D, feel free to roleplay voices in the head. You don't have to wait for me. Yay! Creepy! <laughs> Yay. You're part of the forest now. So, as you're pondering that... The cat's eyes snap open. And it hangs from its tail looking down at you. And its mouth opens in a grin. And even more than the squirrels, it has dozens upon dozens of needle-like teeth. Far too many than should be able to physically fit in its mouth. And when its eyes open... You are enraptured for a moment by just the sheer brightness shining from within it. And, yes, the fur ripples. And as you can guess, the fur disappears. And for a moment, all you see are the bright shining eyes and the too many teeth. The cat is before us. Not anymore. But the body was. It was, and now it's gone. What do you do? I say, in, I say into the darkness, it's quite a surreal dream, is it not? After a moment, you feel yourself going flying as something hits you from behind, both of you. Hold flying, on to the road. Flying off into the thorny brush. I would like you both to make risk rolls. Uh, sorry, ruin Ruin rolls. rolls? Yeah, ruin rolls. I have rolled another one. Mm. I rolled off the table. I'm going to roll the other. All right. I'm going to keep rolling this one for a second. I got a one. Uh, You're good. (laughs) You're good. Um, You go flying into the thorny brush and you cut yourself and you're bleeding, but you're not ruined yet. And you hear that laughter again. As I go flying into the bush, I, I start to make a uh, cartoony, bouncy and 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 pain noise, like I'm a squeaky toy. Oh, I see. You, and you hear, D. Actually, what D? What is you? What do you your your voice in their heads say when they do this? I should have known. What did Dee say? She's laughing. She finds this incredibly funny. You, so just... you can just hear this high-pitched, cackling laughter. Man, of your fingers dead... crossed that's just in my head. Of your The voice of your dead sister in your head, yeah. That's a, some shit. Uh, <laughs> if LaFrange is making these, like, bouncy, squeaky toy noises, uh... I'm going to take this opportunity to be as absolutely quiet as possible and sneak in the opposite direction because I don't need to run faster than the cat. I got you. I You're making... run faster than LaFrange. I got you. You're trying to make a reduction roll. I'm trying to GTFO and, you yeah, know, maybe leave someone him dies behind. Along. Yeah, yeah. just make, a, just make a, a single light die. Yeah, let's give it a shot. 
got a two. Your ruin goes down by one. The cat laughs. <laughs> and I, okay, I so. shout off in all directions, Desmond, Desmond, I'm late for tea. <laughs> you point me in the right direction. Oh, I think you'll see the right direction to go. And as you look up, you see a shrike, a bird of prey, resting right there in the branch above you, looking down at you. Its feathers flatten as it's getting ready to pounce. What do you do? I look and I say, Desmond, I love the new coat. But I'm late for tea, and I know not where to go. Could you tell me the direction out of here? And I'm, I'm attempting to persuade and confuse Aha. Okay. Creatures of the forest. I got you now. Yeah, that's definitely a risk roll. So that's something that you're skilled at. Persuasion and negotiation. Mm -hmm. So that's one light die. Um, Are you willing to risk your mind or body to succeed? Yes. Okay, that's a dark die. Obviously. Devil's bargain here. Let's see. I think that the devil's bargain is that, or a devil's bargain could be, I should say, that as you're trying to walk away and keep an eye on this thing, you're going to stu you could you're going to stumble into dumb and knock you both down. Do like either that. of the others of you have any suggestions? I'm a big fan of bad things happening to both of us. All right. D? Oh, but Chase, you have an opportunity to torture us. I've got... I, I really like the idea that just bumps into him and can obviously see Dumb is trying to quietly creep through. All right. What do you think, Lafrange? You like it? I really want to go to tea time. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, let's let's go with that. I'll I'll okay. bump into dumb. All three dice. I rolled a four on my dark and twos on my light. So you succeed with the complication. So the complication is not only do you stumble into each other, but as you do, that cat appears practically on top of you. So describe how you succeed in persuading the Shrike. Oh, the Shrike? Well, yes, I I look up and after a nice compliment, I remind Desmond I'm to meet our friends for tea. How am I supposed to do that if we're lost here on the ground? You know what happened last month? The tea went cold and the biscuits were hard. The worms. Why, the worms weren't there for you either. And as this Shrike flies... Hoping to get the early worm. I follow it. And just as you do, you smack right into Dumb, who is nervously looking about. And you fall to the ground. And as noted, the cat is right there. And the cat says to you both, <laughs> Tell me why I should not eat you both right now. He's like garbage. We are garbage. What he said. Mm. Um. Hey, uh, Lafrange, why don't you make a risk roll? You're good at this sort of thing. Your your body is definitely at risk at this point. I've rolled a three. On wh how many? On what? How many dice? Uh, that was my dark die. Ruin roll. Risk roll. Oh, we were going to make a risk roll of you trying to talk the cat into it. Mm. But it's just a ruin roll. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. 
yeah, so your ruin doesn't go up. And the cat, pop, toying with you, just knocks you both, and you go tumbling down a hill. Out of ring four and into ring five. Wee. And as Wee. you roll down the hill, and as you come to the bottom, you're still Hold at this reduced size. And you see ahead of you another rose bush. This bush is very large compared to you. It is not made of wrought iron like the previous one. It is... You've or seen sister. wild roses. This is a beautiful rose bush, however. Not like the wild roses before. The thing is this. There's one rose that is this pure beautiful white you have never seen such a brilliant shade of white ever among this white as the new driven snow rose are dozens of roses flecked red with blood stains the th bush thorns are black dripping with ichor and tangled in it is the corpses of those who came before those corpses are pale because it is their blood that is staining the other roses as you glance behind you the brambles have closed your path there is no retreat now What do you do? You know where to go, but forward? Go forward? I look at the bodies. Each of them just a trophy hunter. No familiar faces. Correct. Oh, Dan. I say something's amiss here. D was yep. seen twice, and Yorick a second time. And even the pig that is my father I saw here or the last I hope but each of these faces is new none of them are us Dumb has not looked down at the bodies at all just slowly walking eyes on the road you know this single rose could satisfy your deepest desires if you are pure enough. You're not pure enough. As you oh, said, you're garbage. But <laughs> your companion is even more impure. Easily. And you could purify yourself by slaying the impure and be found worthy. What do I'm you do? The the you could get the rose back. He could bring me back. All you have to do is kill him. Yeah, and I'm just... just gonna keep walking, looking towards the rose. Let my hands just sort of slip to the side. Maybe, like, grab a fistful of bramble. Just, like, make a weird Alice in Wonderland cestus. Just one tiny strike. I mean, it would barely take anything. He probably even wouldn't see it coming. <clears throat> you hear the laughter of the cat. LaFrand, <laughs> 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 what do you do? That's such a miss. I see I see Dom just eyes on the prize. Has has he reached the bush yet? Would I, I, I think there's, there's a fair close. amount of distance. Yeah, and it's very large, so even getting to the one white rose would take some effort to climb up to it. Hmm. You know. Deliver him for judgment, and you will be spared. You each hear that. Deliver him for judgment, that you...
you can be spared. Damn. There's a strange... Strange scratching at my ears. I swear I've heard it before. Do, do you hear something? D? Yeah. <laughs> Please tell I, me that giggle was in character. It was indeed. Sacrifice. Tell you what. Atone for your sin. That bush looks a bit uh, precarious to ascend. Feed me with his blood. Hoist me up onto the bush, would you? Sure. You're young. My body is quite wasted. Don't trust him. He's a liar. Yeah, I, I begin to move and wait for, for Dom's assistance. His lies prove his impurity. So I'm gonna not like crouch down, but like bend a little at the knee, put my hands together on my like thigh, and just sort of like wait to hoist. Y'all are toying with me now. <laughs> the suspense. Wait. The Hello. suspense. <laughs> what shall happen? Squirrel. In the Rosenwald. Lafrange. Lafrange, what do you do? Oh, I'm so tempted to just do it now. Do it, do it now! No. Do it now! And this is the voice of the cat in your head. Do it. <laughs> the treasure can be yours. Lafrange is visibly restraining himself. Like, just clearly something is driving him to act impulsively, but he, he stumbles over and steps into, into Dumb's hands and grasps onto the thorns and vibes, vines and begins to ascend. At exactly that moment, I am going to shift my hand to the side so that LaFrance drops. I'm going to <sighs> grab him about the waist and I'm going to suplex his ass into the freaking thorns. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you, just, you just hear as you do this a voice that says, I am so proud of you right now. <laughs> so... First of all, to see how well you do that, there's, there's there's two things. First of all, you make a reduction roll to see if you succeed in yeah, that sure. part. And then, if you succeed, then LaFrange will make a ruin roll. I got a six. Oh! You do not succeed. LaFrange... Well, Does LaFrange he, hold on to the... LaFrange actually grabs top, on and is now, like, dangling there. Like, no, like, it's just dangling there, not pushed into the thorn, but is holding on to the bramble, feet dangling in the air. Is Dum still standing? I would like to, I would like to try something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel Once like I... Dum is still standing, but, like, how his knees were, like, a little bit bent, like, maybe 135 degrees, it's a lot closer to 90 now, like, he was prepared to catch a human, so he's, like, crouched. Oh, well, you see, Dom, the plan is to catch you within my legs. Just around his neck and to cast topsy-turvy. Oh, I love it. And let his oh, body float geez. up so that I may get closer to this prize. Yeah, this, with the casting a ritual is definitely going to be a risk roll for you. Just a risk? Well, that that... Yeah, let's see... Actually, I'm trying to confuse him as I do. Okay, so... Um, Equilibrium, uh, that, that'll do it. That'll. If, yeah, so... so um, we'll say is that if you succeed, we'll treat that as a successful reduction roll for you. But... The idea, of course, is if you succeed, then he floats up into the brambles himself. 
Um, as it's a ritual, you must include your dark die. Yes. Is this something that you're skilled at? I've been playing dumb all along. I'm skilled in confusion. Mm. You've been playing both dumb and me. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Um, all right, so a dark die. Devil's Bargain. The spell also affects you. I can choose to take the Devil's Bargain. Yes, you, you, can, you don't have to take it. It's a bargain. Yes. And if I roll high, I fail on the light die. If you ro- no, if you roll high, you succeed. Because this is a risk roll that we're mechanizing yeah. as a risk. Yeah. As so a if reduction. you succeed, we'll deal with it as a re- as as also as reduction roll. Um, but leaving that reduction part aside, the devil's bargain is going to happen to you. That's the, it will. The, yeah. You, so, just both of us float into this thorn bush and do battle inside it. Yeah, I'd yeah. Like, I'd like to give one more opportunity for pain. <laughs> Another devil's bargain, if anyone has. Does anybody have any other? Yeah, D. Let's see. I just like the idea of them floating and fighting. I've now become like. An emperor at the gladiator game, which is like, yes, fight! I think we've lost... Val- oh, no, there we go. We lost our video. We heard your audio. Your audio was fine. Oh, you know, we, we heard your audio. We just, for a minute, we lost your, your face. And you looked... Huh. It was funny. Um, I actually still had her video. Okay, but on it, Twitch, it did look like she froze. It's because of because it was on my video, and that screen oh, okay. captures what's going to Twitch. Um, it's all, you know, fine. So... Um, so, another devil's bargain here is that even if you succeed, um, you're both caught on the brambles right here. Another theoretical devil's bargain. Yeah? You succeed, but my weight shifting is slightly more than enough for you to hold on, so we separate. Which you'll note is not even what I wanted to do, because I mentioned in chat that I was going to power bomb you, and yes. I can't do that if we're not connected. It's true. Uh, all right, let's let chaos decide. Uh, you got to power bomb me. All right. Fantastic. So, so the one that stay lets connected? us uh, stay together. Keep you close, and you can have your fun. So you're taking a devil's bargain then, or...? Yes. And the devil's bargain is what exactly? I didn't understand. That we will remain conjoined and be within the bramble. Okay. All right. So let's, uh... So there's three dice. Let's see what happens. My light die is a four, and my black die is a two. So... Or a one, if you want. You succeed, but there's a complication, but you don't take ruin. Um, and it is less than your current ruin, so in fact your ruin goes down. I'll describe the complication, and then you describe how you succeed. Mm -hmm. I think that the complication, in addition to, as noted, you both getting kind of caught in the bramble, I think that the complication is that the corpses on the on the brambles here that are impaled on the thorns awaken and all turn their heads to you. Sup? How is it you succeed with your ritual? Tell us about what that looks like. The first I must ask, Dom, what does your shirt look like? My shirt? Yes. Uh, Dom probably has a Pretty typical Henley sort of a tunic. Uh, it's a little bit of thicker material, like depending on time frame that this world exists in, not even necessarily particularly yeah. well worked cotton or wool, but like, you know, we're treasure hunting. Uh, it's got a bunch of scratches in it. It's not full threadbare, but the threads are bearing themselves, what with all the thorns and such. Um, mm light tan 
not well, super well fitted, but not like hyper loose. A little bit at the neck. So, as you as you lunge for me and I wrap my legs around your neck, I pull your shirt directly over your head and place my palms on your stomach, casting the topsy turvy spell that I did before, and you rise up. And I would believe that we'd be able to float up as I fall and you are disoriented, but it seems the dead have woken. What dead? I can't see shit. Yeah, because it's pulled over his head. (laughs) But you can see them, but they begin crawling towards you. Actually, they can't quite, they're trying to, they're trying to pull themselves off the thorn so that they can feed your blood to the rose bush. What do you do? And we are caught within the bramble. Yeah, you're 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 tangled in it. Mm. Shit. Uh, I would like to reach up, dig my hands into uh, Lafrange's like thighs, lift him at least a bit above my head, and then just slam his ass forward, ideally into some thorns. Okay. Lafron, Ideally. does this make sense to you as a risk roll? For, for Chase or for me? For Chase to make the risk roll, but it's your character. I just want to make double sure. Like, this is where yes. we are in the game, right? Just making sure. That's all. Yeah, we're, we're, we're consenting combat. This is where we are. So the risk is... I that... think this is the first PvP combat that I've actually encountered in this game. No, we had one in the game with Abby. We had conflict, and, but it was more us climbing over each other than necessarily. Yes, that that was a little uh, subtle. Okay. Everyone, everyone yeah. knew they wanted to fight, but they were actually <laughs> like throwing each other around. Although I would suggest that you trying to suplex him into the thorns was probably the first one. Well, so, yeah, that was an attempt. Just like this is an attempt, right? <laughs> um. Yeah, and if you succeed, then I'm going to ask uh, uh, Lafrange to make a ruin roll. So, um, um, first of all, is there something that you're skilled at? Yes, wrestling definitely is something you're skilled at. Yeah. Um, are, are you willing to risk your body to succeed? Bring it on. Okay. A devil's bargain. D, do you have Let's any ideas? Fan. Or Lafrange, do you have any ideas? Gone, lost, never to be heard from again. Uh, here's a devil's bargain. Whatever you do, you get so thoroughly entangled in the rose bush that you're comple- almost immobilized. Okay, okay. I have no devil's bargain that would be interesting right now. What say we're about like at the edge of the thorn bush? Yeah. Uh, what say, regardless of whether or not I manage to contact thorns, uh, I yeet with such fervor that between both of our mixed up gravities, we just kind of tumble further into the bush. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of, that's, yeah, we're on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yep. Cool. Okay, cool. That one. So that's three dice. So I got a five on my dark die. Excellent. But your current ruin is a four, right? Yeah. So you succeed with a complication and you take a ruin. So your ruin goes up to five, first of all. And as you do this, As you're flying back into the the thorns, thorns begin to sprout from your skin, dumb. You look down, and your skin is just covered in prickly thorns. Sounds like weapons. 
the other the the complication here though is that as you fall further in you are caught by the living dead that's what stops you further in the rosebush um lafrange i would like you to make a ruin roll please i've rolled a five as well so your ruin goes up so you're both at ruin five now the the so um remind me dumb where was it you were trying to throw uh lafrange uh the idea was just torso right onto the most thorns that i could aim at and you throw him he lands on it but he's and you see blood beginning to pour out you, Lafrange, begin to feel that your clothes are starting to shrink. Wait. It's not that your clothes are starting to shrink. It's that you are returning to normal size in the middle of the bush. Minute, Not immediately, but you feel it starting to constrict you because your clothes are not growing with you. Mm-hmm. What do you do? God, I'm at such a loss. <laughs> uh, I'm completely surrounded by the bramble, yes? Yes. Uh, fuck. <laughs> I'm in a bit of... I'm just in a rage, honestly. This projection, my ritual... My body would be left behind. Oh, you want to, your body will be left behind as you try to just become a spirit to observe a remote location. But I project indefinitely. You could try. Let's try. So, ritual automatically involves a dark die. I don't know if this is something that you're skilled at. Oh, it might be. What skill do you have from your dreamer? Skilled in confusion. Eh, I don't know about that one. Could I make a contract with the dead eyes? Yeah, that would be a perfect devil's bargain. That would be a devil's bargain, though, I think. So the devil's bargain, What's your? what would be your devil's bargain with the dead eyes? I shall be able to hear the world, and I may walk, and that is all. I may not speak, and I may not see, but I will hear it. You will lose your sight permanently? Yes. Perfect. That is, the, that is a great... So one light and one dark. My light is a five and my dark is a four. So, you succeed with a... Oh, no, this is... This is easy. You project... First of all, where do you project yourself in spirit form? In the chaos, I... My mind only thinks of the wall outside of the bramble. I've lost all memory of the locations we've traveled. That's the fountainhead. And you feel yourself... What does it look like as you cast this ritual? What does it look like? Like how... I plunge my fingers directly into my eyes and blood pours from them. I howl in the pain, though my poor eye was... It's faulty. It still was attached to me. I can feel it. I feel my touch. Until finally my spirit exits through my mouth. And my body goes limp. The complication is... Not only can you never see again, even in spirit form, you can never return to your body. 
Your spirit is doomed to wander this forest, blind and yearning to return to impossibly return to warm flesh once more. I knew the risks well. Dumb. There is that yeah. there is that rose. There is that one perfect rose and you you have satisfied the bush. You have carried out justice. You know in your heart that you are now purified. The undead cease to move towards you. But you are still in the bramble. And you hear the cat. Oh, there's only one left. I guess it's time for a snack. <laughs> I would like you to make another ruin roll. I would love to. Just one dark die. Mm-hmm. Five. Five. Your current ruin is a five, right? Correct. So, nothing happens as far as that goes. The cat suddenly appears in front of you, though, and says, Where do you think you're going? Thinking about up. I'm just kind of like letting gravity slowly shift me upwards. Oh, that's right, because you're under the influence of the topsy turvy ritual. Oh, that's so good. You start. F it starts to bat you around. You know, like your cat does. Toying yeah. with you. I'm gonna like go for some high fives in here. Oh, that's good. That's real good. Yeah, you hit it, but it's just knocking you around, trying to knock you into the bramble. Could you make another Fair. ruin roll for me, please? I'd love to. Five. Five. Yeah, you, again, float further upwards, and now you are holding on to a petal on that single, pure white rose. You've reached it. What do you do? With your feet up above your head. This rose can fulfill your as far as I understand it or I feel it my greatest desires. Mm -hmm. I'm going to so I'm on the rose sort of climb up a little bit till I can like reach my arms around it and just use my whole body to twist it off. That's definitely a risk roll. That's fair. So, one light die for wrestling, probably, right? Same technique I was going to use. Why on the is it the least surprising thing that you would create a character that's good at wrestling? Yo, there was a character with that uh, as an ability, like... And you were just like, that's it? Yeah, like, there weren't other options. Um... Are you willing to risk your mind or body to succeed? Like, at ring one, yes. At ring five, I feel like it's a given. Okay, I'm just making... You know, it's always your choice. Well, always. it's not always your choice. Sometimes it's obvious well, situation. Yeah. In this case, necessarily. Okay, but, you know, um, a devil's bargain. The cat will have hold of you. I accept that. All right, three dice. Let's give it a go. Six, six, and five. The five's on the dark die. Oh! <laughs> you... Tw That's amazing. I can't believe this five was on the dark die. I rolled three straight fives on a dark die, and I'm sweating. Like... Yeah. I just keep thinking, oh, eventually. So, you twist off the single pure rose, and the cat says, oh, this isn't fair. This is my bush. 
I don't think I should let you go. I think you should stay here with me. What do you do? Not to discount your company, you're very lovely, but I'd rather hang out with my sister alone, thanks. Then I would twist the other direction to try and, like, unhook from the claw. All right. I, so, um, do, do, do. Oh, okay. So, first of all, you have a light and a dark die. Right, as your, is tradition. Your your body, like even your body's definitely at risk. What it's could go could wrong happen. here is the cat could just eat you. Yeah. The devil's bargain. If you succeed, you just keep floating higher up into the air. You're just gonna give me a die for a thing that was gonna happen anyway. <laughs> sure. Sure. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Let's yeah. see what happens. Can I, in your mind, be like? I believe in you. You can do it. Thank you for believing in me. Two threes and a six. Six on the light. So you succeed. You keep floating upwards. The cat waves at you. Here's the thing. You're floating upwards. Yeah. And you know what makes eye contact with you? The Shrike. Neat. Is it time for tea? Yeah, I'm going to ask you to make just a ruin roll as it dive bombs you. Deal. Uh, just a straight give it a shot. Just one dark die. Five. Five! Yeah, it grasps you, but you don't take any ruin. And you know what I think? What do you think? I think it just takes you off to its nest. And I think as you're laying there, it deposits you in the nest, holding on to this rose. And behind you, all you can hear is the cacophony. Cheep, 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 cheep. From the little baby shrikes looking to feed. And as you turn around, you see them descending upon you and feed. Can I, what, as yeah, he yeah, turns yeah. around, as he turns around and sees, I'm just gonna be like, it's a good thing you still have those thorns. Let's go get some dinner. Yeah. And that is where we will end it. So what y'all think? I'm, I you still proud stressed. of me, sis? I'm so <laughs> proud of you. You made it out of the hellscape. I mean, you're in a mess now, but you'll be fine. We'll work I together. I was also... All sorts of emotionally prepared to just float off into the sky. Scene. I um, yeah, yeah. I, when I, I I've said before, like when I was a kid, one of the I hated at the time, but one of the stories that in like when I was taking English or lit, uh, literature or language arts or whatever you which class it was that most influenced that left its mark on me. I mean, was the Lady and the Tiger, where you never really know how it ends, and I love that for Trophy Dark. I just love stories that you don't quite know how they end, and you can kind of uh, project Spill a little in bit. The blanks, yeah, whatever you want. Yeah. Well, I I just like to say we made it to two hours and forty minutes, and uh, at least two of us got to the very end. Yeah. D was there. It is. Yeah, I was there. I'm there in spirit rose form. It's I, essentially in this place that kind of counts as a body. I don't know why I'm having trouble with Val's video. Your audio is fine. I can hear you the whole time. Oh. But your slideshow. Like record oh. photos for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I want to thank all three of you. We're going to go around in a minute, and I would like you to just each tell me your favorite moment from the game. Um, I would also like to thank Blaine, Blaine M39 here in... Uh, Twitch chat for writing this incursion. I've run it twice now and I really, really like it. Um, if anybody is interested in it, it's in Codex 37 Childhood. If you go to gauntlet-rpg.com they'll have links and so forth to you. Um, as uh, uh, Cloudbot has been telling us every little bit, 
Trophy is having a Kickstarter right now. Um, if you like the game, please take a look at the Kickstarter and see if it's something that you'd like to support. There is a free preview of both Trophy Dark and Trophy Gold there in the in the in the Kickstarter. So even if you don't support it, you can still play the game. That's the great thing. And there are lots of other places to get incursions or write your own. Uh, if the game includes instructions on how to write them. Incursions are really simple to write. Um, or just rip the mechanics and, and flavor into other games that you did uh, that you that you like to play. We have a friend um, who has been uh, taking the incursions and porting them into D and D Fifth Edition. Um, but I am all in on on Trophy personally. I love it. Is one of the games that I am obsessed with in my mind right now, along with as people know, um, Blades in the Dark. Um, but you know, the, uh, partly because I love games with this devil's bargain mechanic. Like that is just. Oh, it speaks to me. Um, it's like one of the best mechanics in TTRPG. I love it. It's I love super it. good. It's so it's so evocative and so useful. Um, also, there are if you're following on Kickstarter, Zine Quest Two going on right now with a bunch of like independent creatives uh, making little RPG zines and trying to kickstart them. There's a bunch there that are for trophy. And in general, just go support independent RPG artists. Listen, listen. Hasbro doesn't need your money, right? Independent f creatives need your money. I know, get me wrong, I spent more money than I should on D&D 5th Edition. Uh, but I'm done now, and now I'm all about either indie or, like, really small press. Like, like, okay, you know, if you want to go support, you know, Evil Hat and their games and stuff, that's fantastic. You know, they're a little guy, too. Um, Signal Station, I ran, what was it? I thought I'd run something of Signal Stations before as well. I, I, I know that I have. I can't remember which, what it was. Um, but anyway, so Signal Station is another uh, trophy author in there. Giant's Carcass is from um, Sabine V5, who is... Uh... Oh, I've yes, that's right. A Warm and Pleasant Hum is about bees. And it's... Yep. It's good. So Signal Station won a... Uh, uh, a, a, an earlier trophy dark um, contest, so their work will be in uh, in the book. So, anyways, um, and then just a quick programming note: I will be back here on Thursday night playing Mothership with friends. Um, who uh, and Mothership is a sci-fi war game in the vein of Aliens and Event Horizon and that sort of thing. Also, fabulous actors. Um, yeah, because we're, we have. Uh, uh, Taryn and Jesse and Maria, Happy Capster, um, and maybe one other person. We'll see what happens. Possible surprise. Um, in any case, um, so let's go around, and i just like folks to tell me what their favorite moment tonight was. We'll start with Arax. I know you asked for favorite moments, and forgive me, I'm, I'm releasing my voice, but... Uh... Would you mind if I did some stars and wishes? Sure, go for it. Stars yes. are basically the same thing. Yes, yes. Um, star, I I love fighting. Thank you, Chase, for fighting with me. It was it was a lot of fun. It to was wrestle. fantastic. Like we had conflict in the last uh, incursion we played together, and I'm just sort of like, I feel like Arax and I should slam each other into wood things. I mean, honestly, uh, Ring Five is about the characters doing that. So, yeah. Um, I was happy that I got to use everything on my sheet this time. Uh, my last character, I was like, oh, yeah, that seems interesting. Maybe I can figure out a way to use it, and uh, I didn't really get there. But this time, I figured it out. Um, it was hard to use the dreams, but I think, I think I'm able to just, like, see whatever the background is. Like, if it's something obscure, I can just channel that into my character and find some way to use it during the session. Um, and for wishes, we were talking about it before the session. But I want to, I want to make sure that I make a point with whoever I'm playing with, to have some kind of connection with. Because if the characters have prior connections, they can have more scenes together. And you know, like I, I did my best, but at times I'm just like I'm I'm doing my own thing here. <laughs> no, no, I think y'all y'all I think y'all did a good job of that. Um, you know, first we had characters with parallel drives, and then you tied immediately into it with oh, but I've seen their brother. And that was fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, and I and um, 
I, I appreciate you mentioning wishes because normally for a one shot, you're like, well, this is the, this is the last one shot, which is true. It's a one shot. But I like running trophy. I'll be running more trophy. Y'all are all invited. Um, I will be also running trophy gold, but I don't have anything to announce about that yet. But I'll be running dark and gold. Um, uh, so yes, um, yes, bonds in the game are excellent. Uh, Val, Val, what was your favorite moment tonight? Before you just turn into a pumpkin and fall asleep there. Bing. Uh oh, my favorite. I don't know. Oh, that was so many. That was so many things I liked. Uh, my favorite moment was uh probably the the fighting with the Cheshire Cat because I really I Alice in Wonderland is my favorite children's book. I have I like a copy from 1917 on my bookshelf because I love it so much that I collect vintage editions of Alice in Wonderland. So when wow. we were doing this, I was like. This is awesome. Uh, and my, but my favorite overall running theme was just like D and Jump because I love like connections as well. Like Arix was saying, I love connections and like the fact that there, I was like, I made a character who doesn't care if she dies because yeah, it's fine. And I was like, oh no, but dumb. But then we're still hanging out because I have a voice in your head from a plant. I just want you to go back and be like, Hi, I'm dumb. This is my sister. And just hold up the rose. <laughs> With no context. Hi. Hi. Dumb is dead. Dumb. We don't know that. It's open-ended. <laughs> in my in my head, dumb just kind of walks out of there. Like, I imagine, spoiler alert for Dragon Age Inquisition, Hawk walks out of the fade. We'll floats out of there. I don't know. Um, we don't know how gravity works. Sh anymore. Sh Schrodinger's treasure hunter. Schrodinger's treasure hunter. Yes. Is dumb alive or dead? Have to observe either, it first. Listen. Either way, we're going to still be hanging out. Forever. Sh forever. Oh no! What a terrible, terrible devil's bargain that we must endure. Oh no! The worst nightmare. Yes. Speaking of which, um, Chase, what's your favorite? Yes. Tonight? Hello. Hi. Ah, oh, favorite moments. Um, there's definitely several, like, I tend to dislike party conflict in a lot of games, but Trophy is perfect for it. It's, it's literally built for it, like, literally. Yeah. So, like, it's, it's fantastic to get this out in a consensual combat kind of way. So, Eric's, thank you so much for being <laughs> such a worthy foe. Taste, taste, whatever game we're playing, you can try to kill me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we should play some Invisible Sun together. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that whole thing. Riffing with Val is one of my favorite things to do in any game. I'm not sure if there was a specific moment, but, again, the next incursion that I play, I want to sit down and be like, how does my character know your character? How does my character know your character? So that that can just be the thing. And then eventually it's just all of us just Statler and Waldorfing while Kyle tries to get us to ring three. Could you could you imagine where it's that I died and it was you two at the end there? Oh, yeah. You two trying to betray each other. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh. I would have just been like, D would have just, like, it, if it was like a sacrifice thing, D would have just be like, Oh, okay, so we have to betray each other. Stab. Yay, oh! you're purified now! This <laughs> solves our problem! Don't make me cry on stream! I was like, that's just what it would happen. It would have been like, you could just kill him and be purified. I was like, I could kill him. I could just do and do this and then we'd be fine. I'll be a rose bush. Bye! I, don't know why I love Val you, Val. So I love you so much. Val is so much fun to play with. I have played games with Val for like a year now, and it's always a joy to have my honorary niece here. Um, so my favorite moment, I don't know that I have one favorite moment, but I really did enjoy that scene with the fountain just because it's so visual to me with the old square and the um, wrought iron rosebush and all of that. I just, I love the visual in it. It's one of my favorite uh, 
parts of the incursion that that uh, that Blaine wrote, um, and yes, the the whole thing with uh, uh, D talking into people's heads was pretty good too. That was so much fun. And then y'all running with it, right? Y'all were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's go with that. Um, so with that said, um, I think we're done for tonight. So thanks, folks. I'll see some of you hopefully Thursday. Our Saturday game is on a very brief hiatus while we get ready for season two of Blades in the Dark. Um, but that's definitely a thing. Like, this isn't like a season two if we feel like, like we've got a upcoming session to do our postmortem, make some decisions and changes, and then schedule when we're going to restart. But it's going to be quick because I'm already joking for that game and it's only been two days since we played. Uh, so thanks everybody. Good night. And we'll talk to everybody soon. Bye.